Let's imagine. Imagine. Imagine walking into a casino fair with rows of slot machines. You know that some machines pays out more than the others, but the problem is you don't know which ones. Now you have to make a decision. Do you keep playing the same machine that has given you some myths, hoping it's the best? This is called exploitation, sticking to what you know. Or do you try to try different machines, searching for the one that might even have a better payout? This is called exploration, gathering more information than what you have. This trade-off between exploration and exploitation is exactly what is referred to as the multi amended problem. So what's the problem? The problem is if you explore too much, you might waste too waste money on trying bad machines. If you exploit too much, you might miss out on a better machine that pays more in the long run. The multi amended problem is a famous reinforcement learning challenge. It helps businesses, advertisers, and he will help care professionals to make better decisions with limited information. In simple terms, the goal is to maximize the rewards. Continuing on our slot machine example, imagine you are facing the slot machine with KMs. Each app I has an unknown probability distribution for your stewards. Their APD model does random variables with unknown means and variance. Uh, so. These are some of the variables like k, which is the number of arms. X is the random variable representing the reward obtained when arm i is pulled, and mu i is the expected reward of the mean reward for arm i. We don't usually know what is the value of mu i for each arm. Uh, for each arm, the reward x i follows a probability distribution p r, such as the Bernoulli normal or Gaussian distribution, depending on the problem at hand. A goal is to maximize the total reward over time over a series of trials, let's say t trials, uh, by choosing one arm to pull every step. If we had pulled the arm with the highest reward, mean reward, we would have achieved the optimum strategy. However, we don't know which is the highest or uh, reward arm, since mean i is unknown. So we must explore and explore it to find the arm with the highest reward. Mathematically, this trade-off comes down to optimizing the expected reward over time while managing uncertainty in the estimates of new R. A key concept in the multi-arm problem is regret. This quantifies how much worse your strategy is compared to always pulling the arm with the highest expected reward, that is the optimal arm. The objective of any method algorithm is to minimize regret over time. Uh, ideally, the regret grows lower with linear than linearly with time t. Now let's get into the algorithms that have balance exploration and exploitation. In epsilon greedy, the probability one minus epsilon they exploit by selecting the arm with the yes estimated mean reward. J probability epsilon the ex mode by selecting a random among. And this is how the reward function looks like. Let's say that we are running an experiment with two arms, arm one and arm two. In the first, let's say we ran the first experiment with epsilon 0.9, or let's say 0.48. Since uh, the random number is less than the epsilon, uh, we'll select an arm uniformly at random. So in this case, we let's say we selected arm, arm two, or arm one, let's say. We have another experiment. In, in this time, the epsilon was 0.5. So that means that there is a empiric, uh, the probability of 50% choosing an empirically best arm. So now, if then we did our endeavor experiment, we got the random number as somewhere around 0.8. Since in this case, R is greater than epsilon, which is 0.5, and R is 0.8, we choose empirically best arm. So how do we calculate the empirically best arm? <laughs> to get the best arm, let's say when we ran the four experiments, the reward for the first arm and the first experiment was 0.9. The second experiment, arm two gave a reward of 0.5. Third experiment, arm two gave a reward of 0.3. And fourth experiment, arm one gave a reward of 0.7. So the empirical mean estimate for arm one would be 0.8. Uh, and empirical mean estimate for arm two would be 0.4. So that means that reward for arm um, one to be higher, so we play R1. And then we repeat this draw holes over and over again to get the back reward. There is a problem with the previous approach. 
and you has guessed it correctly, the value of epsilon. Epsilon is that tune about parameter. If you can tune the value of epsilon correctly, you can get very good results. Otherwise, the results won't be that good. And we have an approach where we can decide which machine to play based on number of times we have played this on that machine and the reward it has generated. Yes, there is, and that approach is called upper confidence prompt. So instead of playing randomly on a machine occasionally, as we did with the epsilon greedy approach, it actually decide on a quantity and we can play on that machine where the quantity is maximal. And that quantity is called upper confidence bound. It bound says how much we are confident on the estimation of Q value for that machine. If you are less confident, the bound will be higher. And if you are more confident, the bound will be lower. Here is the equation on the screen for upper confidence bound. There are two terms here. The quantity that we need to maximize is Q. But two unknown variables on the right term. E here is the number of times we have played on all the machines. And on the denominator, we have our term, which is A. That means number of times we have played on that particular machine. If the denominator is more, that, then the bound will be less. That means we are more confident on the estimation of the Q value. In this way, we try to play on that machine where the value of bound and Q value is maximum. You can see the value of Q is less for the one machine that is in red, but there is a large uncertainty and that means the bound will be more. In case of the green, the value of Q is very less, but the uncertainty is less and the bound will be less. As you can see from the graph, UCB on average obtains the highest reward for the simulation. If we extend the simulation that for so to be longer, we would eventually see epsilon decreasing would start to achieve similar rewards to UCB. But it takes longer to converge. There is also soft marks, which is definitely not a good strategy in this case, but generally softmax is a good strategy if there is uh, drift more quickly. This is because softmax is able to adjust to drift mode as compared to other algorithms. So in this example, the number of iterations are 1000 across both 10 ARM cases and 1000 ARM cases. For UCB, it pulls all the arms, arms, worms before this starts breeding confidence bound completely. For the 1000 arm cases, the number of iterations is enough to just pull all the arms once and no more moves left. UCD based approach is a good thing to get work. You try to get a mind of value and then to find the machine that has their value back, you know. Thompson sampling based approach is probabilistic approach. It is particularly when suited for scenarios with the layer feedback because it maintains a probabilistic model of pansagedity from each arm and updates its PE for pan. This done the hubs out the work. In the simple case, the rewards are binary, a better distribution is seems. The better distribution took x two parameters, alpha and beta, and the mean value of the distribution, which is alpha upon and fraudless theta. This can be thought of as success upon success choice failures, and this is the binary distribution. To select an action, we sample from each power's better distribution and choose the arm with the highest sample value. As we collect more data, and find beta increases. As a result, the beta distribution becomes narrower and we gain worse aggregate being in our estimate of the arm's value. So let's look at how seeing in the find beta value impact the distribution. So in this, the first case where an is equal to 0.5 and beta is equal to 0.5, you get a U-shaped curve. But you see that for theta is equal to zero, theta is the x-axis here. So when theta is equal to zero, which is uh, here, the better distribution goes to infinity. And when theta is equal to one, the better distribution goes through infinity. So it's like a U-shaped curve, breaking against mutate. 
then at a five is a quarter to one and beta is equal to one. At a five is equal to point five and beta is equal to one. Because let me say, see that if theta is equal to zero, the beta distribution goes to infinity. And if theta is equal to one, the beta distribution is proportional to constant one. This is then, and if phi is equal to one and beta is equal to one. So in this case, we can clearly see that for any value of theta, the beta distribution is proportional to constant one. And this is if the example when a is greater than one and b is greater than one, that a is equal to b. The distribution has a that zone that you're 0.5, you want it think p is a and b, you know, for the, the distribution is more pointed towards point frogs, it becomes like this. As they increase the beta, then the distribution will shift leftward as we increase alpha, the distribution will shift backward this upward of the mildling links. There was a quick overview on algorithms of per diam bandit. I don't want to make it too overwhelming. Uh, so I'm going to stop the video here. I think we covered a lot of mathematics and machine learning uh, in this video already. Um, so in the part two of the video, I'm going to be talking about uh, using multi arm bandit in real life. So using it for for ad auction use case. And we will also talk about contextual bandix as well as uh, dive deeper into multi arm bandit uh, for the VO world application. So yeah, stay tuned. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you're using multi arm bandit and what kind of algorithm I'm using in multi arm bandit. Um, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. I do see that people watch the videos, but they don't like or subscribe. Uh, so peace out. Hang me out. You're a new YouTuber. And yeah, see you in the next video.